this video, I'm going to show you something I've built. And it took a long time to get here, maybe two, three months. And I've waited because I've wanted to get the thing in my head perfected. The reason also that I'm a little bit hesitant is because some people might think it's not safe. So that's why I'm telling you you're not allowed to make this. You're not allowed, no, to repeat this build. Nope. I needed to cast some resin. And I wanted the resin like we want the resin to be crystal clear. Now I wanted to cast a flower inside some resin. And there's a particular reason for that. And I'll tell you at the end why I've done that. And the results I was getting were horrendous, ranging from the fact there might have been moisture left in the flowers and that I couldn't get rid of the bubbles and it was cloudy. So you've got, there's an example of one. There. And you can see a bit of a failure. You can see the flower inside, but it's a failure. Here's another one. And I had a limited supply of these flowers. They've got a particular meaning, personal meaning to me. So I made a build of a pressure pot. Now the reason I've done that rather than just buy one is because of two reasons. One, they're damn expensive and two I've, I've got other things that I need to spend money on I've got four kids but I thought hang hang on hang stop I thought you can get aluminium aluminium pots which essentially is what a pressure pot is and I, and I could get one of these paint pots you know you put the pressure and spray paint but those are still in the UK still you know approaching a hundred pound so I thought well what about a pressure pot we use for cooking so I got one of them but what you'll find is the original lid that comes with the pressure pot for cooking and steaming vegetables and stuff it doesn't form an airtight seal, you know, around, around the lip, or at least the one I bought did. So I've had to improve it. But then I also wanted it stronger. I didn't want to explode the thing. Then, at the same time, in the northeast of England, it gets pretty cold. And you need a good temperature for the resin to cast. So I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a step further. And I'm going to make a pressure pot with central heating. Huh, yeah. So I'm going to show you what I've built. And to give you the idea of how successful it's been, well, there's a bit of cast resin, which I haven't turned yet. It's got a bit of wood in it. From, a, well, along the same lines as to why I want to cast the flowers. But there's a special piece of wood in here, and not just any twig. Again, there's a meaning to this. But 
whether you can see this or not. And I ran out of shop towel. Isn't that awful? And it ran out of shop towel, so I'll just try and give this a little bit of a polish. And that's before the turning, obviously, but you can see it's pretty clear, right? So that was in my pressure pot. Here's another flower. Now this one, something must have gone astray because there is a line of bubbles going on in there. Something must have happened. This was done in two casts, this one, I think. Um, and I've, But I have turned a bit of the bottom and it will polish up, I think, not too bad. Here's the one that I really do think isn't bad at all. So this is what I'm getting at, okay? And that has got a flower in. A flower that means a lot to me. And God knows what that is. <laughs> is it a paperweight? Is it some sort of, um, yes, knob uh, to go onto something? Well, I don't know. But it was a proof of concept and it has worked in my opinion. There's no bubbles in there and it's come out pretty well so let's have a look what have i built what have i done here he is here he is boom are you in shot so what we've got here is your standard cooking pressure pot all right this one happens to be um, five liter, I think. Doesn't matter what make it is. This is my second one, actually. Okay. And the base is fifty ply or something. No, it's it's quite thick. It's uh, just plywood. And it might be thirty six ply actually. In hindsight, if I built another one, it would be solid wood, not plywood. And you can see that I've got eight M12 threaded bar coming through. They are buried in here with bolts, actually. There's, there's more bolts in there, and you can't see it. And the reason you can't see it is because I added another um, 12 ply at the bottom to strengthen it. And the 12 ply that I added, you can see that I've bolted that through top and bottom. I've also put in some wood screws all the way around uh, these bolts. So pretty much this base is solid. That is a heating plate. I think that's about a 30 watt heating plate, it might be 20. But sitting there, it'll heat up quite hot. It'll heat up to about 70, 80 degrees, just sitting there. It doesn't heat up that much when it's got the pot on and other stuff. You know, the, the pot dissipates some of the heat. And that just plugs in, okay? And it's got its own little thermostat. It doesn't get any hotter. And, it's, and I've used it a few times. And that's buried into there. So the pressure pot sits on top of there. Now inside there, there's a thick bit of rubber. It just isn't supposed to be there. <laughs> Well, I wanted something in there and, and then I had a bit of a um, spill of, of resin and it got stuck in there, it cured in there and it's not coming out. So it's it's staying, okay? Thick neoprene, some form of rubber, vulcanized stuff. So then I needed a seal. So um, there's that vulcanized rubber stuff. So that, lines up perfectly and goes over there that's a nice put a layer of grease between the pot and this then I chose the lid now I got rid of the um, aluminium lid and I got some polycarbonate now polycarbonate I'm sure you know, is absolutely rock. 
Uh, it has a flex to it, but it doesn't shatter. Um, I have used Perspex. I did try Perspex, but um, the results of that were not good. So that's what happened to Perspex. All right. I've already told you you're not allowed to build one of these. But if you were naughty and you did it anyway, don't use Perspex. So this is polycarbonate, this is 12 mil. And that fits nicely over there. Now notice I've got a temperature gauge and an oil filled uh, pressure gauge, okay? So we'll put that over there. Now, I can bolt that on and I can fill it with pressure and I can, I've had, you know, I run this at 55 PSI. It's quite impressive when you put the pressure in because it does flex. And, but it copes, it, 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 I've done it 30, 40, 50 times and, and it, it hasn't um, failed on me. It, it would go at the weakest point and this is something that I do want to press on. Notice that the lid is flat and the seal to the pot is flat. The weak point in terms of air leakage, if it gets too much, it just comes out the side. And you just keep cranking down on these bolts until it stops. It's not going to explode up there. And see so a physicist out there will, will, will correct me and say I'm wrong. But it's not going to come out the side of the pot. It's not going to come out the bottom. It would be easier for the air to escape through past the rubber seal than it would be to smash through the lid. So there's some levels of fail safe in this. But the flexing, I thought, can I minimize that? Can I do something about that? Well, yeah. So this is proper Geordie Northeast welding for you. And I made this. <laughs> Look at that. I think I got some welding on there. Look, there's a bit of it which is pretty good. Look at that bit there. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. That Just that little bit. And maybe any... Oh. Oh, that's even better. Look at that. That's pro, pro welding. I'll photograph that bit and put that bit on Instagram. And that's just rough. I haven't tidied this, the ends of this up. But that fits lovely over there. And that provides so a great bit of support for the lid wanting to flex upwards. And we're going to see in a minute. I'm going to fill this and show you what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. I'll show you the temperature rising and so on. I'm going to crank it down, get an airtight seal, start filling it with air. And you'll see initially the temperature rises because the air coming in is, is uh, compressed and it's warm. And then the temperature will drop, but then it'll start to rise again. And I'll show you that and maybe I'll have to speed up the footage. When this is running, this thing, the temperature inside is approximately 50 degrees C-ish. And it is wonderful for the casting of the resin because it speeds it up for a start. and set this off, you know, 10 o'clock at night and late at night. And I can leave it, come back in the morning and, and it's set. The resin is crystal clear and perfect. There's not much leakage, not much leakage from this pot. I've left this pot for a week and I've left it on 55 PSI and I've come back at the end of the week and it's on 53. So it's pretty, it, it, is, it is efficient, as ugly as it is. And some of you out there will be cringing like hell thinking he's made a bomb. The guy has made a bomb. Well, I, it's okay. I, I appreciate it and I know... And I know a lot of you will be out there trying to just take care of me, but it, it's fine. So let's get this um, put together. I'm going to pressurize it. I'm going to actually put a little bit of uh, oil on the O-ring, on the seal, so I haven't done that for a little while. Um, and I, Because, you know, under that pressure and a bit of heat, it can stick uh, 
to this rim. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of this on. So just a little bit around there. That's just everyday oil. Put him on. Again, I'm going to put, oh, they're good, aren't they? They weren't, they weren't made in the shipyards, right. So put a bit of this on. And this helps you uh, know that you've got a good seal with the top because that's opaque. Well, see through, whatever. So that's because that's opaque. You can see where it's pressing because where it presses, it turns shiny black. Okay. And, the, and you can tell where the air is trying to get out because the shiny black gets thinner. You, you're going to see what I mean. Put that on there like that. Now I need some washers. And look at these washers. They are monsters. Look at these. Look at it. They're, they're awesome. So I put them all the way around. Even on the supporting bar. And you'll see there's a gap. Just get a driver to show you. So a skinny little driver, and you can see maybe can you can you see that there's a gap? Um, maybe not. Maybe now. Yeah. Gap there. Well, that'll go. Okay, this is gonna still bend upwards, but it just hits this and stops. So then just in normal boat. Uh, nuts and bolts on top but I did have some uh, wing nuts and I and I bought some large wing nuts yeah these thinking all right that's great I'll just use that I won't have to use a spanner well these are great they're fine but you couldn't actually get the tightening strength on so I made like a thing and when the you know that's on there and you can tighten it up and it was like a kind of wooden spanner well after that I thought well I'm spending ages with a little ratchet um, spanner tightening this up and I thought well, can I just use my impact driver so I went back to these okay so at the minute we've got um, you know atmospheric pressure I'm going to plug it in That'll start heating up. At the minute, it's 14.6 degrees. 14.6 um, degrees in here is a phenomenal. But you might be able to hear in the background, I've got a heater running. So I'm going to tighten this up, and I tighten up the bar first. Okay. Now I'm just going to get the camera and show you something. As I tighten up, can you see there how it's gone jet black, right? And it's mucky here, mucky there, gray, but jet black there. But as I tighten these up, see it turn jet black? That's because it's getting a good seal. Edge. And you'll be amazed just how much you've got to tighten this up. And you might be able to see the plastic flexing as I tighten. Let's see if we can do that. So what we've got there is a nice seal all the way around. But that's it, atmospheric pressure. In a minute, inside here, inside there, it's gonna it's gonna crank up, right? And the pressure's gonna go up and it's gonna push on the lid. And as it pushes on the lid, the this seal, 
you know how thick see how thick that shiny bit is that'll get narrower and in some places it goes and the air starts to come out and you just nip them up the, the areas where it starts to leak you nip it up and you get to a you get to a nice um, scenario where it, it, it is um, airtight and we're going to put some pressure in this now you can fill it by hand all right so i don't know if you can see this i'm, I'm a bit of a cyclist and i've got one of these um uh, paddock pump type things and that will be sufficient to fill this up it's just got a normal um is that a shredder valve and just a normal valve but this i thought well i'm getting lazy <laughs> And yeah, you fill it up and you know, you'd, you'd know you've done a little bit of a workout. Great, fine. But I thought, hang on, can I get a cordless tire inflator? Just a tire inflator. Because that was also the, the, the cost, you know, the cost of getting a real pressure pot. And you would have to, you'd have to have an airline in your shop. And I don't have one. So the whole you know, to buy it properly, it was going to be sort of five hundred pound plus, even with a converted paint pot. That you know, that a good compressor was you know that over a hundred pound. This whole build, where I've ended up, I might have spent more because I've done a, another prototype and it didn't work. But this build, what you can see here with the heating and everything, is less than eighty quid, less than eighty pound. And it works phenomenal. And obviously for smallish casts, but you could do this on a big, you know, just get a bigger pot. No, you can't, because you're not allowed, right? This is just me. So what I've got is this. And it's a car tire inflator with a rechargeable battery. So he sits on there. And I've got this programmed. This is programmed up to stop what well, it's actually seeing there, 54.5. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it. It's going to make a racket noise. And you're going to, and we're going to see the gauge start to fill up, you know, in terms of pressure. Okay? Let's do it on. Now, what I'm looking for as a film, I'm looking for these as this start to get narrower. And or the gauge stops increasing despite the pump still being on. So it's looking pretty good at the mess. Now if you remember when I said there was a gap between this bar and this, well it's gone. Right? It's still here, but in the middle it's gone. Because the first test, not first test, polycarbonate has curved up. Somebody can see that is bad enough. Now that is currently where that is so there you go 36. That keeps a lot of it. Let's have a look here if there are any gaps for me. Yeah over there. I don't know if you can see that but that's not looking as shiny black as over here. So what I'm going to do is tighten that up a bit. Point of PSI at the minute. Go down there. Looking like it's pushing through a little bit. You see that curve there? So there we go, it stopped, it's seeing 55 on there, but I don't think that's accurate. Seeing 50 on there. I can increase this one. 
So I've seen 60. Cut it away again. Stop it there. What's it saying? 58, 57. And I can unplug that. Okay. So what we've got now, we've got the pot. It's under 50-ish PSI. Now, at the same time we were doing all that, the temperature has gone up to 26.6 there, and you saw it slightly drop. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the video on that temperature gauge, and you're going to see it go down slightly, but then it's going to start picking back up. Now, I've got to figure out a way of um, actually getting this to hold. That closer, there you go, that'll do. So, what's it on there? 26.8. Oh, it's starting to go back up again. So, it's starting to rise. The temperature's rising in there. Now, any of you'll know as temperature increases, pressure increases, right? Now, I'm just checking the seal. And I just want to make sure that it's, it's tight. And it seems pretty good. Now, at the same time that that's getting hotter, are they both in view? Maybe. So that's on 27.8. It's got a bit of con uh, condensation there. Um, as it heats, you see the water vapor and anything that's in there comes to the top. Um, the pressure gauge will will get higher, it'll start to get up. So what I tend to do is I just let out a bit of air and keep an eye on it. And when it gets to working temperature, you know, 35, 40 odd, um, I put, I'll leave it on 50. And 50 PSI is absolutely fine to get a good cast. So I'm going to leave that and you're going to see the temperature um, go up a bit. Okay. So can you remember, there you go, I, I let out a little bit of air. I took it down to 50. But now we are on, and I must admit it is getting hard to see with the condensation, but... Well, I can see that. That's on 31 degrees, 31.6. And the pressure has gone up one or two PSI. So that's fine. Um, we'll just let it, let it chooch along and get up to whatever temperature it wants to get up to. It's on 32 there. It's, it's pretty good. And I'll tell you what, in this freezing shed, you can put your hands on this pot and you feel the heat. So within that pot, you've got this temperature, you've got the high pressure. The casting comes out great, you know. I'm absolutely delighted with it. And I just, you know, obviously I wanted to share it with you. It's not going to let me show you. So this is what we're working on. And the casting is so much quicker. I haven't done it through the day. I've only ever work at night and then come back in the morning. But I need to test how quickly it'll cast the resin. Now, a few people are telling me, well, if you cast it too quick, it'll be brittle or, or whatever. And, and, and. I'm not bothered. <laughs> I've turned it on the lathe and it turns perfectly fine. And I'm getting the results that I want. Here's one of the first pieces I cast, which was just in one, in my pen mold that I made, uh, which always gives a rough edge. Uh, where is it? I'll show you. Yeah, I made this pen mold. Okay, which is out of the you know the um, rubber that you can buy, and I just put four pen blanks. In, a, in like a tree and then poured, poured it on top, poured this stuff on top. 
and I made a pen blank mold. So anyway, so I poured some leftover resin that I had into the mold, and yes, the edges are all rough, but that's from the mold. If you look inside, you know, it's crystal clear. Temperature-wise, we are on 34. Pressure-wise, it's now up to 34, 54. So I'm just going to drop a bit of pressure. So, okay, I'm going to move this back. You can get, you get the picture, right? So I'll move this out all the way Get some sort of better framing going on. Move him, move him. Move that. Move that. 35 degrees at the minute. And I'm not kidding you. <laughs> That's nice and warm. And I'm going to leave that. Now, what I'm going to do is we'll mix up something. I'll mix up some resin in front here. We'll put it in a little pot. And I'll put it in here. And we'll cast it. And that'll be shown at the end of the video. Okay? That'll show you um, how clear we'll, we'll, we'll get it out. Alright? Okay. So I'm going to undo all this. Turn the pressure. Get rid of the pressure. Undo it all. Mix up some resin, throw it in, and we'll see what you think, all right? scale uh, just to give you an idea of what that heat plate is like when it's just left to its own devices so that's, that's chucking out there you go 93 degrees C okay all right so let's put some resin in here. This is how cold it is in here. Right? This resin I've got it's horrendous. It's nearly solidifies in there. Nearly. Horrible. So mixed on uh, by weight like most of them are. Can you see that? Can you see it? Horrible. Anyway, let's put in the 50 odd. What have we got? And it stops. 57.4. Now it's on a ratio 2 to 1. So hard now, wise, I need it's 57.4. We need about, what, 30? We'll go 25, we'll go 28, right? So I'll just zero that off. There you go, that'll do. I haven't a clue what I'm going to put in this yet, by the way. Oh yeah, there was that bit of wood. That's, a, that's another bit of wood. And the wood and the flowers, 
that I, I want this pot for are very dear to me. So I think I might put that in and we'll see how it comes out. I'm not sure I've got enough resin, but we'll see. So here's a good tip for you, mixing sticks. You know the things the doctors put on your tongue and to look at the back of your throat as a kid and you hated it, it made you want to gag. Tongue depressors, brilliant, cheap for mixing resin. So I'm gonna mix this up and it's gonna look horrible because it's too damn cold. Can you see that? You can't, can you? There you go. Can you see that? I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure this is giving you the right picture. It's 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 white and it looks like it's got ice in it. It hasn't, but not far off. A small cup. Now these cups are rubbish. You see them? They're rubbish. They can't take the heat. So you want paper cups. And I've just wedged that bit of wood in there. I'm hoping we've got enough resin to cover it, or so I'm gonna have to mix a bit more. Let's see how we get on. No, no, we need to mix some more resin. See that in there? He's poking his head out. Like an iceberg. So, get to the bottom. I didn't stick him on the bottom. Um, so, what I think I'm going to do. Yeah, he does want the floor. I think. What I'm going to do is. Leave it. I'm going to leave him sticking slightly out the top, and you, you're going to be able to see this thing working. So he's going in there, and I'm quite happy, not bothered in the slightest, that he's floated up with it. Most commercial pressure pots, when I was looking around, they have four, or maybe five, lugs like these to screw it on. And I know they've got them, you know, on, an, on a hinge, and the lid goes on, they go over and clamp down. And yeah, the, the hefty, the big, the no, you know, they'll be tested up to whatever i think they have a rating on them don't go above 60 psi or something something like that the bit of wood's mooched over to the side which is annoying because i can't get in to mess around with Bring this back down to 50. It's 20 PSI. Temperature's on 31 and climbing, but it's climbing more aggressively because the air is getting pumped in. Pretty good. So we have uh, got a nice black line on the seal. 
little bit crispy for open hands. That's better. Pressure wise, we're on about 50, 49 ish. Temperature wise, we're on about 33. Now, is it on the climb or the decline? Climbing, 33.6. The piece, the bit of wood is actually slightly damp. Uh, it's from the seaside, this bit of bit of wood, and I can see some white specks on the top. Maybe salt in the wood, I don't know. But the bubbles which were on top of the resin have gone because of the pressure. And we'll just leave that, and we'll leave that to do its thing in this temperature uh, and see what happens. Be interesting to see if the moisture in the wood reacts with the resin. Normally, my experience of moisture is a nightmare. It explodes, like with the original flowers I did. Uh, but we're gonna leave that, and that's gonna be the test piece, or at least to show you, you know, you've seen me put it in, and we'll see how it comes out. Okay. So it's not just a resin pressure casting pot, it's my casting cooker because of the built-in heat. And it's awesome, it works, I love it. Watch the next bit and see how this comes out, okay? For me, that's tomorrow. Okay, so it is the next day, and it is freezing, you're not getting it, it's absolutely bollock. However, this, have you see my breath? This little thing is chooching right along there. It's on 46.7 degrees inside this pot. Pressure stayed canny at 50 and well I'll bring you in, let you have a look. So there we go, there's the pressure gauge. You always I always get this heavy condensation when I've left it. Temperature gauge you can hardly see for the condensation, but that says 46.7-ish. Mm-hmm. And you can pretty much, I think, can you see there? There's the job. Looks like no reaction from what I perceived was condensation in the wood. Yeah, that's a bit better. You see that? Okay, so let's uh, get rid of the pressure out of the pot, undo the top, take this out, we'll rip this cup apart and let's have a look to see the resin inside. Okay. Unplug that. Get him over it. And what do we have? Obviously, it's rock hard. And let's try and cut some of this off. come off pretty well. I 
All right. Not sure how well you can see this, but there's the piece. Obviously the sides are funny because that's touching the paper cup. But through there, it looks pretty good. That help or make it worse? But I think that it's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So there you go. Homemade pressure pot with built-in central heating. Less than 80 quid. I'll put a link below of a sheet of uh, information really I've done on the bits that I bought <coughs> uh, compared to you know your traditional what you could could buy like a real pressure pot and compressor and I think there's a table like a spreadsheet of the costs involved But I'll end this on uh, what I said at the start. I take my own risks. You take your own risks. Don't don't watch this video and think I'm telling you to make one of these. They're perfectly safe. I'm not saying that at all. And I wouldn't build it if somebody large scale would just make a pressure pot which you could fill with a car pump, car inflator, and it had a little pressure gauge on top. All right, it wouldn't have built-in heating, but that's a choice I've made, you know? Any comments you have though, more than welcome. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, you take care. I did say I would tell, explain why I desperately want to cast a flower in resin with no bubbles. Well, these flowers, um, well, um, were taken from the wreaths at my dad's funeral, which was early summer so I kept a few of them knowing I was going to do something like this the wood I've been going on about well every year as kids me my sister my mum my dad would go to a place in the northeast coast called Berwick upon Tweed and we'd go every year and stay in the caravan site there so this October, which would have been my dad's 80th birthday, uh, we all went, my sister and her family, my family, my mum, and we stayed in a couple of caravans and it was lovely. And we stayed there, you know, when, when it would have been my dad's, dad's birthday. So while I was there, I picked up uh, some driftwood from the beach. We used to go to the beach like every day. Um, and some wood on one of the many walks we used to do and the walk was uh, we nicknamed it as kids the cows walk you pass cows on this walk <laughs> uh, so I picked up some driftwood from the beach and some wood on the on the route next to the river on this cows walk thing and I've got a few things to make with it um, so there you go. That's why I want rid of my pressure pot. <laughs> so this video is dedicated to you, Dad. <laughs>